Hey everybody, it's Ben and Karen. How's it going? Go us. Thanks, Farty Party, for subbing. Yeah, Jeremy Silman died last night. Uh, he had a long illness, it said, but it didn't say what he died of. A long illness. And um, I thought it would be nice to look at some of his best games as a memorial to his passing. Thanks, CL Smith 15. Yay, thank you for the sub. He, he was better known as an author than as a chess player. Um, at most of his chess, like 95% of it, was played in the 70s and 80s. So a lot of you weren't alive yet. Uh, thanks for the 41 cents, Farty Party. And uh, he was an IM, and his peak FIDE rating was 2420. Uh, he was 69 years old when he died yesterday. And uh, I found some games from the 70s and 80s that we can look at and analyze. And I didn't realize until just the last half hour or so that some of his openings were similar to mine. He played sort of like I did with white and black, which is weird. Uh, the Jay Dizzler, thanks for subbing and starting the train. Okay, so first game is from 1989. Nine. And it's Jeremy Silman White against Charles Van Buskirk. And this was played in Santa Barbara in an open tournament, I assume. Mm -hmm. uh, Silman's White. He plays like me. Queen C2 Nimzo Indian. That's in my wheelhouse. You know, this is how I play with white. A3, knight F3. And actually, this game follows my game with Svetizar Gligorich. Also played, no, well, played in 1988. That game was agreed drawn because he was too famous to beat. So this is, a, this is a theoretical line, and it's also my game with Gligorich. Like all of this is. And possibly we agreed to a draw here, but we might have made one more move. I don't know. Me and Gligorich. And Yasser Sarawan has won a couple of nice end games here with White. Typically, White gets a queenside majority by just pushing his pawns and getting a lot of space. And Black's bishop suffers. And so forth. Okay, so he played b6. Get his bishop out. b4. Bishop b7. White plays f3 in this line because it's hard to get the bishop out without blundering this pawn. Mm -hmm. Now it's easier. Also, we're fighting for the e4 square and for a sandwich. Rook c8. Knight b5. He wants to play knight d6. There's a hole. There's a hole. Okay, and then black played knight e8, which prevents knight d6. Then bishop d3. Now black can kick out the invader, but he didn't feel like he had to. He could play a6. But he just played king f8, get his king to the center. Rook, F, rook hc1. Typically, you want both your rooks on the queen side because you're going to push your queen side pawns. Like that. And so you don't want to play rook ac1 because this rook on h1 has nothing to do. Okay, king e7, c5. White could also play a4. This is a typical position you would see from this opening. Okay, black played d6, which is engine approved. cb, ab, Rook c8. Could take either way on c8. He took with the bishop to keep his rook here. <clears throat> Engine says that's fine. a4. Now white has two to one on the queen side, <clears throat> and he can easily make a passed pawn. Conversely, it's very difficult for black to make a passed pawn. However, material is equal, and black's pretty solid. So it should be a draw, but white's the one pressing for the win. Play d5. Now he could play knight d6 and trade pieces. a5, getting his pass pawn going. Black played h6. 
Probably to make sure bishop takes could never happen. In case he's playing Fisher or something. King c3, ba, rook takes a5. And black doesn't want to trade rooks because the past a pawn is difficult to stop with the white king going to b4 and all of white's pieces near the a pawn. Thanks, caged Bruno, for 400 bits. So black played rook b8. Again, the engine says white slightly better, but it's still in the draw zone. Rook a7 check. Rook b7. The engine doesn't like trading rooks. It wants to actually play bishop d7, which pins the bishop, but white can't take advantage of it. King b3. The king is going to be moving on up to the queen side. And we have a pass b pawn. Black traded, and now that the pass B pawn, and with the better king, white has a clear advantage. So white white's doing well, just gaining more space on the queen side. Very difficult in practice to play black, because not only does white have a passed pawn, and black's bishop is sort of trapped, uh, white has a much better king. We have a question here. Is pawn takes better than rook takes? Pawn takes better than rook takes. In this position, uh, the engine says they're the same. I would play rook takes. I would, because I want to trade rooks. Because if I trade rooks, I can queen my pawn. But if there's a lot of pieces on the board, it's hard to queen your pawn. At least pieces in the way. White's pieces are even in the way. So I, I like rook takes, but the engine says they're about the same. I like the way black decided not to trade rooks here and then traded rooks like two moves later. So I don't, I don't like that decision. Now white's moving his king up. Obviously, it's more difficult to move your king up when black has a rook because the rook can attack your king and black rook could infiltrate white's position. But black doesn't have any counterplay. B6. Yeah, this is just how I like to play. Usually isn't this easy. King B4 stopping all checks. Bishop B5 check. Knight C8 check. Forcing the king away from the B pawn. Knight D6. Now white wants to play Knight E8 check, attacking the king and the pawn. The king has to go here which isn't good for stopping the b-pawn. Then white's king just walks in. So black finally decided to get some counterplay with e5. Too late. Now, now you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. That's, that's a Simpsons joke, but only like one of a billion people would get it. So there's only 94 people watching. So... Uh, So in this position, he played king e7. Problem is, if you go to the e file, you lose this pawn. If you defend the pawn with king g6, then white takes on e5. Okay, so king e7, knight takes. Now black has two passed pawns, but they're not very dangerous, especially since white's taking them. And this is the key to the game is getting this H pawn because now white has a passed H pawn and a passed B pawn. So you can stop one, but you can't stop them both. Thanks, Thank Cage Bruno. Thanks, Cage Bruno, for the 300. No, yes. I said only one of a billion people would get the Simpsons reference I made. Lots of people watch the Simpsons, but they don't get my Simpsons references because they forget the episode after they watch it, which is weird. But, but. Man, it's questioning episode was 35 years ago so yeah okay so now white has a past h pawn and a past b pawn this pawn isn't dangerous the bishop stopping it the king stopping it and white has two extra pawns and then silman wanted three extra pawns then he traded knights 
Now it's a fairly easy win because with my two pass pawns here and two extra pawns, I win. Okay, what would you play here with white? White played a move and black resigned. Um, let's see. Thanks, Wes, for subscribing. You're the best. I, mean, I think it's H4. Correct. And then he might try a, four, a king f4. But yeah, but the problem with king f4 g3. is you ignore it. No, you just ignore it. Oh, I thought just, you would. You just move your king here. I yeah, thought... the, king, the king can't go anywhere from here. It's trapped. You can't go here. Oh, you so can't you, go here. you were just doing Oh, I see. Yeah, I just play here and threaten your pawn. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought you'd have to go like g3 or something. No, and then I, I can make any move. I could play bishop a6 then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, now the engine says white's plus 35. Yeah, the important thing is to get this H pawn going. Mm -hmm. Now if they play D3, you can simply take it. You don't have to take it, because when they play D2, you can play bishop B3. But right. there's no reason not to take it and just play H5. And then two queens, what else? Yeah, H4, you got it. Good job. Well, if... Um... Yeah, there's two pawns. You can't stop them both. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Yay, Karen got the right answer. Go, Karen. After h4, black resigned. That's that's the kind of game that I would want to play. It's the same opening. It's the same position. And he gets a pass pawn on the queen side. And black is tied down and passive the whole game. That's no fun to have black that game. That was no fun.